Hello, this is the next video on a playlist that I'm calling Parameter Estimation, and we're going to look at the Rao Blackwell theorem. And it's stated as this let delta be an estimator for some function of our unknown parameter theta, g of theta, with the uh, absolute expectation finite. Let t be a sufficient statistic for theta. And let t0 be defined like this. It's the expected value of our estimate delta given our sufficient statistic t. Then for all delta, the mean square error of our new estimator t0 is less than or equal to the mean square error of our previous estimator delta. Okay, so what in layman's term means if we have an estimator for this function, we can improve it by conditioning on a sufficient statistic and then averaging over that. And the mean squared error cannot be worse than the mean squared error of our original. So the, our new estimate, our old estimate. And notice that, no, notes before the proof, that T0 and delta have the same expected value. So the expected value of T0, then we plug in T0 here, the expected value of this conditional expectation is the same as just that conditional or the unconditional expectation of delta. So the, the, the mean values of, the, of these estimators are the same, but the new one has smaller mean squared error. So there's really no reason that we should use delta, and we should always use T0, because the average values are the same, but it has smaller variance, or mean squared error, I should say. Now one big, big note, though, the mean squared error of T0 is not necessarily the best mean squared error. The Raoul Blackworth theorem is just a way to improve an estimator. And it sort of is justification, well it's more than sort of, it is justification that our estimator should actually be functions of sufficient statistics and then they will have the, the smaller mean squared error. So now for a proof um, here is, is just, first we'll just state a fact that the variance of a random variable is equal to its expected value squared minus the mean quantity squared. And the variance is always greater than or equal to zero. So this is always greater than or equal to zero. So if we add this to the other side, we get this. Right? This piece is here. This piece we've added to the other side is this, and it's the inequality holds. Now this is equal to this, right? The, the squared is on the outside, so if we take the expected value in, we get this piece, and this is constant in regards to the expect by, expected value, so we just get it back, and then uh, the expected value of delta given t is what we were calling t0. Right, that's our new estimator. Now, the mean squared error of our new estimate is this. It's the expected value of this squared distance, difference. So T0 minus the function that we're trying to estimate, squared, averaged over all possible values. That's the mean squared error. Now, notice that what we've done is taken the expected value of this right here. And it's always less than if we take the expected value of this, which is what this is. But again, the total law of expectation says if we take the expected value of a conditional expectation, it's just the same as this unconditional expectation here. But this is the mean squared error for delta, our original estimators. The estimator minus what we're trying to estimate, squared, averaged over all possible values. So the mean squared error for a new estimator is never greater than the mean squared error of our original. Now a few notes after the proof. Um, if the mean squared error of our original delta is finite, then inequality is strict. So here we say that it's less than or equal to. But if this meaning squared error is finite, meaning not infinity, then this is strictly greater than that, 
unless our original estimate delta is equal to that sufficient statistic. And we'll prove this one in a second. Now the result holds for vectors too. This is so for real valued uh, parameters, but it holds for vectors too. We're not going to cover that, but I encourage you to look that up. Now, we proved in a previous video that the mean squared error of an estimator t, you know, given the parameter, is this. It's the variance of our estimate t plus the bias squared. And so that you, if for results, you can look that up in the previous video. So now the proof of one that the inequality is strict unless the two estimates are equal uh, follows. Okay. So the mean squared error of our original or our updated, you know, the Raoul Blackwell estimator, T0, the mean squared error of T0 is less than or equal to the mean squared error of our original delta. Now, then, then going inward, this mean squared error using this is this one here, and this is this. Okay, so so far there's been nothing new. And then one more note: we're going to look at these two biases. So the bias of T zero is here, which is defined as the expected value of T zero minus the the function that we're estimating, and Remember, T0 is this expected value of delta given T, right? But this is a conditional expectation, expectation of a conditional expectation. So that's just the expected value of delta. But the expected value of delta minus the function we're trying to estimate is actually the bias of delta. So those two biases equal. So this piece is equal to this piece here, right? So that implies that the variances, this variance is less than or equal to that variance. Okay, so that's a given. So, so far nothing new. Now, here is the total law of variance. It's saying the variance of an estimator is equal to this, expected value of the variance, uh, conditional variance, plus the variance of the conditional expectation. Okay, this is called the total law of variance. So now notice that this is this sort of, right? The variance of, of this is equal, to, and then this is, remember this expected value is what we call T0. So how can these two equal, these two pieces? And it's if and only if this is zero. So we're going to look at this quantity on the next page. So these two variances can equal if and only if this expected uh, conditional variance is zero. Okay. So now let's look at this piece right here. So this expected value is this outer expected value. Now the variance is the expected value of this minus its mean quantity squared. And so that's what we put here. That's just the definition of variance. Now all these conditional pieces, we can actually take that out and write it like this. So these two are equivalent because this condition would go into here, but it's already conditioned, so you get it back. And this condition would go into here and you get that. Okay. But the expected value of a conditional expectation is just the unconditional expectation of that, which is this. Now, this piece here is what we were calling T naught, T zero. So we have this. So these two variances equal only if the expected value of this is equal to zero. But there's a theorem that says the expected value of x squared, well, let me rephrase it. If the expected value of x squared is zero, that implies that x is zero. So now put this in for x, and that ex and the expected value is zero, so that says that delta minus t is zero. But you can take that apart, and delta is equal to t t zero. So the only way these two variances are equal, if the estimators are equal, and then that proves the uh, what we want to prove. Now here's a, an example that I found on Wikipedia, and I really like it. So if we let x be Poisson, 
uh, and it'd be a sample from one to n. This is the joint distribution, so it's the product of all the marginals, and we get this. We want to estimate the next observation, or we want to estimate the probability that the next observation is zero. And in a Poisson, that's this right here, e to the minus lambda. Now, it's easy to show that the sum of the xi's is a sufficient statistic for lambda. And we will use this estimate, this I, I would think somewhat silly estimate, for this probability. Okay, so delta, we're going to use the first observation of this sample, so x1. If it's 1, then we're going to, um, it's 1 if x1 is 0, and it's 0 otherwise. And we're going to, and this is what we're going to use to estimate the probability that x is equal to 0. Right? And it, it is somewhat silly, right? So let's look at its expected value. So the expected value of this is actually here. So it's the, pro, it's the values that they can assume times the probability of assuming those values. So 1 times the probability that x is 0 plus 0 times the probability that it's not 0. Well, this is 0, and this goes away, and the probability that x1 is 0 is this, uh, e to the minus lambda, which is what we want it to estimate. So it, delta x1 is an unbiased estimate of lambda, e to the lambda. Okay. Now, the Raoult Blackwell estimate would be this, and we're going to call it T0. It's the expected value of delta given T. So to rewrite it, it's this, the probability that x1 is 0 given that the sum you know, is some value, call it little t. Then this conditional probability can be written like this, but this is a, an intersection, the probability that x1 is 0 and this is equal to t. Um, remember, now, here we go from 1 to n, but in this condition, if x1 is 0, it's given, then the sum from 2 to n is equal to t. So that's a, that's a, a key point there. But now x1 and all the other x's, which doesn't include x1, are independent, so we can break those apart. Now we can uh, plug this in. So the probability that x is 0 is this piece here. The probability of, of this is equal to t. Now the sum of uh, independent Poissons is Poisson again. And there's only n minus 1 of these, so it's Poisson with a parameter n minus 1 times lambda. So that's this piece right here is this probability. And here there's n x's equal t, so it's also Poisson with a parameter n lambda. So I don't know why I put t there. Those should be lambda. Darn it. Um, so then, this reduces to this piece here. Okay. So this is our new estimator for the probability of the next observation equaling zero. Now, does that make sense? Let's investigate that a little bit. This here can be rewritten like this, one minus one over n to the t, right? Um, t, we said, was the sum of the x's. Now, if we multiply this by one, n divided by n, you know, n, yeah, is one, so then it becomes n times x bar. But note that the limit of x bar goes to the mean of x, which is lambda. All right? So then the li as limit of n goes to infinity of this quantity is the famous e component. Now, since that is not, it's n, not 1 over n, it goes to e to the minus 1. But then this constant also has a limit of lambda, so it goes to lambda. So this quantity goes e to the minus lambda. So as n goes to infinity, our estimator 
is exactly what we're trying to estimate. And that's the power of this Raoul Blackwet estimator. Well, anyway, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.